Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. According to reports in Spain, Manchester United have made a 68.5 million offer for Marcos Lorente and we are prepared to double his £90,000 a week wages. But a move for Marcos Lorente is unlikely. Now Marcos Lorente is 26 years of age so he's still in his prime. He plays as a midfielder. He can also be deployed as a second striker. Atletico Madrid paid £35 million for him from Real Madrid. He's got a contract with Atletico Madrid until 2024. Before Atletico Madrid, he had a loan spell with Alaves. And before then, he was at Real Madrid. He endured 11 years with Real Madrid. So, would you take him at Manchester United? Now, can Ole Gunnar Solskjaer lead Manchester United to a Premier League title? I don't think he can. We haven't won the Premier League since 2013. That's eight years ago now. Solskjaer has not yet won a trophy as Manchester United manager and he's been Man United manager over two years. Our only chance of winning any silverware this season is the Europa League. We haven't won a trophy since 2017 and that's nowhere near good enough to our standards. A club of our stature needs to be winning trophies. Um, if we fail to win the Europa League, Solskjaer is not going to be sacked. But Danny Murphy came out not so long ago and said he will be sacked if we fail to win the Europa League. Solskjaer did say not so long ago that winning trophies is an ego thing. He said that in regards to some other clubs and some other managers. And he says clubs like Man United trophies no longer prove success. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has agreed to sign a new three-year contract worth £30 million. It's likely to be two years with an option of an extra year. And he is getting this new contract regardless of whether we win the Europa League or not. Because Woodward believes Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is the right man to take the club forward. But sources at Old Trafford said the other week that talks were set to begin any day on the new deal. Because Solskjaer is into the final year of his current three-year contract. Does Solskjaer deserve a new contract? In some aspects, yeah. In some aspects, no. I can assure he's not the long-term manager for Manchester United. There's been a lot of Man United fans demanding him out of the club. Not so long ago, Oli outs were trending on social media after our 3-1 defeat to Leicester in the FA Cup quarter final. So yeah, Solskjaer will be Man United manager next season. Next season will be his fourth season and his third full season. This is his second full season at the moment. I can assure we'll finish in the top four this season. I assured that when we beat West Ham 1-0 in the league. I've already said to you what would represent a good season for Man United. If we finish second in the league and we win the Europa League, I'll turn around and say, yeah, 
that represents a good season for Man United. That gives us something to build on going on into next season. But if we did eventually sack Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I don't think it would really solve much anyway because when we have been inconsistent, not all of the blame has stemmed from him. It's never all the manager's fault. The main explanation is still Manchester United manager is because he is a club legend. Disregarding him being a club legend, I don't think he'd have been Man United manager now. But we have endured very good periods under Ole where we have seen consistency and where he has got the best out of the team in some of them good periods. But we've got to see consistency persistently and we're not seeing it persistently. Uh, but we've endured very, very bad periods under him where he can turn around and say, yeah, he was lucky not to be sacked. But I think he's the best manager since Ferguson. You know, reflecting now on his being at the football club, he has gained some managerial experience and he's learned quite a bit on the job. There's still a few things he's got to do at Man United as Ole. Uh, before he was with us, he was at Mulder. He won a few Norwegian titles at Mulder, but they're not a big club. And before he was at Mulder, he was at Cardiff and his record at Cardiff was absolutely disastrous. He only enjoyed a short tenure with Cardiff because he ended up getting Cardiff relegated. So one of my biggest concerns about Ole, he hasn't got a proven pedigree as a manager. And another one of my big concerns about him is his decision making because his approach to a lot of games as Man United manager hasn't been good. You know, he's been tactically naive, especially in a lot of the big games. But there's actually been some games where he's showed tactical flexibility, but he's got to show that persistently. And Solskjaer knew when he'd taken over at Manchester United, it was going to be a massive job, despite him knowing the club inside out. And yeah, you can say that we give Solskjaer the job too soon. Maybe we should have waited until the end of that particular season to decide or not whether he's the right candidate for Man United. But we're giving the job permanently because he did very, very well when he first came in. He endured three months as the interim manager. He won 14 games out of 19 in all competitions, so the club decided to give him the job permanently in March 2019. I'd just like us to get a manager in who would suit the strappings of the club, a manager with a big club arrogance and a manager with a proven pedigree in that and a manager that can, you know, get the best out of the players and get the right players in. Oli is our fourth permanent manager since Ferguson. We've sat three managers since Ferguson. That was Moyes, we sat Van Gaal and we sat Jose Mourinho and we're not even really known as a sacking football club. It's just been an ongoing cycle of inconsistency in the last eight years with Man United so nothing has changed but we've got to credit Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in quite a few aspects you know he has made some good signings since he became Man United manager you know he's brought the likes of Daniel James and Juan Bissaka Harry Maguire in brought Bruno Fernandes in brought Odina Gala in on loan Agalo's no longer at the club because he left in January. Brought the likes of Donny van der Beek in, Alex Tellez, Edison Cavani, Ahmad Dilo Traore and Facundo Palestri. In January we loaned Facundo Palestri out. And Solskjaer spent almost £300 million at Man United. But as yet he hasn't got all the players that he wanted to recommend in. Oli has endured four transfer windows so far as permanent Man United manager. But he hasn't been backed enough so far. Like I've said of in regards to the board, it's been one of the biggest issues at the club for a while, reflecting now poor our recruitment policy's been, we've overpaid four players. And in general, the managers the managers that we've had since Ferguson retired haven't got the players that they wanted to recommend in. You know, Ollie's got rid of a lot of players since he's come in. I also like the way he has promoted the youth. Um, he did well last season in his first full season. 
Um, he's done well in some aspects this season. You know, got us to the EFL Cup semi-final, lost 2-0 to City. Got us to the FA Cup quarter-final, lost 3-1 to Leicester. And he's got us to the Europa League quarter-final. And we haven't lost away from home in the Premier League for over a year. I think we are unbeaten in our last 22 Premier League away games. So we've got to credit him for that. But this year's summer transfer window is huge for Manchester United and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Solskjaer's already made his plans for the summer transfer window because not so long ago he had the transfer summer with Darren Fletcher and John Murtough. You know, he was discussing our transfer targets. And he was discussing our transfer plans for the summer in general. I'm expecting us to make around three or four signings in the summer transfer window. And you can identify the weaknesses in the squad. I think we need a striker, we need a right winner, we need a holding midfielder and we certainly need a centre-half. I think Solskjaer needs around £200 million minimum in the summer transfer window if he is to get the players he wants in. He said earlier on this season that the transfer budget had been revealed and it said it's £80 million. We know that £80 million is nowhere near enough for us to get the players we want in. Obviously, we'll sell players in the summer transfer window, so in that aspect... Uh, will generate money and it'll help us with our rebuilding process. But uh, there has been a lot of players on our agenda. Now, earlier on today, I give you the news on Erling Haaland from Borussia Dortmund. Now, Borussia Dortmund have set their asking price for Erling Haaland it's 154 million. Solskjaer keeps calling Erling Haaland to persuade him to join Manchester United. But earlier on this season, Oli said he was following Erling Haaland's progress and he said he was keeping in touch with Erling Haaland. Uh, Solskjaer's worked with Haaland, uh, that was at Mulder. Solskjaer gave him his debut at just the age of 16. And back in December 2019, Solskjaer and Woodward went to Norway to meet up with Erling Haaland to negotiate a possible move to Man United. Now, Erling Haaland's father, Alf Inch Haaland, has been talking about his son's career and his prospects. And it recently said we had an advantage in the Erling Haaland transfer chase. But it said us and Chelsea that had suffered a blow in our pursuit of Ireland because apparently his move to Real Madrid is practically done. But there's so many clubs in for him. Erling Haaland does have a £68 million release clause, but it doesn't become active until next year. Uh, since Haaland's arrival at Dortmund, he has been a revelation. He's been at Dortmund over a year now. Dortmund paid just £17 million for him and he's got a contract with Borussia Dortmund until 2024. He will leave Dortmund in the summer, especially if Dortmund failed to qualify for the Champions League. But I'd be very, very impressed if we got him in because Haaland would dramatically improve us and he would assure us goals and plus he would be reuniting with Ole. So obviously we'd need two hundred million minimum, obviously to get Erling Haaland, because they want one hundred and fifty four million, and plus we need to get other players as well. Now obviously, there's been quite a few centre halves on our agenda. Um, there's a lot of narratives coming out regarding Raphael Varane. Uh, it's very, very likely that Raphael Varane will leave Real Madrid in the summer transfer window because Mundo Deportivo recently said 
that Rafael Varane's future is in doubt and is high on our transfer wish list. And narratives are coming out earlier on this season saying that Real Madrid are prepared to sell Rafael Varane on one condition. He must inform Real Madrid on his decision to leave. And back in 2018, Woodward was prepared to sanction a £100 million move for Rafael Varane. But I'd certainly take him at Man United. He did go very well alongside Harry Maguire in our back line. Rafael Varane hasn't played in the Premier League, but he comes to the Premier League, he will exceed expectations. Varane has been at Real Madrid for like 10 years now. He's made over 300 appearances and he's won 18 major honours. You know, Real Madrid paid €10 million Euros for him from Lens back in 2011. He's got a contract with Real Madrid until 2022. He's highly experienced, he's 27. Now, it recently said our two top defensive targets are Paul Torres from Villarreal and Jules Conde from Sevilla. And I've been hearing rumours saying that Paul Torres is interested in coming to Man United. And we could launch a bid in for him. He has a £52 million release clause. Uh, but we believe we can get him for less than his £52 million release clause if Villarreal failed to qualify for Europe. And Jules Conde, I'd certainly take him at Manchester United. You know, Sergio Ramos, he's been another centre-half on our agenda. So to his Caladou Koulibaly, he's been another centre-half on our agenda. And uh, Declan Rice, I'd certainly take him at Manchester United. It did say not so long ago that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer had agreed with our recruitment team that Declan Rice would be the perfect signing for the club. Now, we have got some very, very good players and these players that have really, really improved at Manchester United. Uh, Dean Henderson, he's done well in the games he's been involved in this season. You know, Dean Henderson has made very good saves, he's made good aerial claims and his distribution's been good. And Dean Henderson's still young and he has got a lot of development in him. Dean Henderson has started six games in a row for us. But I think he should be our first choice goalkeeper because... He's reliable enough now to become our number one and he has got that experience behind him. Before the start of this season, Dean Henderson signed a six-year contract with the club and he did enjoy two successful loans with Sheffield United. Luke Shaw, he's been one of our best players this season by far. He's been player of the season, there's no question. Um, I like the way that Luke Shaw's got forward. He's got into very good positions. He's put good crosses into the box. He's produced width. And defensively, he's been superb. Luke Shaw's had a good career at Man United, apart from his injuries. Luke Shaw's been at the club over six years. And he still remains our first-choice left-back, despite the arrival of Alex Telez. Because when we got Telez last summer... Uh, a lot of Man United fans, including me, were expecting Telez to be our first choice left back, but it hasn't happened. Uh, Eric Bay, he's done well in the games he's been involved in this season. You know, he can intercept the ball well, he shows the ability to play out from the back, and he can be effective in the air. Uh, Bay, you can say, has lost his place in the team. Uh, my only element of concern about Bay is too injury prone, so in that aspect, he is a liability. Uh, as you all know, Eric Bay has apologised to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and his Man United teammates for his disrespectful behaviour. Because it said Bay was furious with Solskjaer because he felt disrespected and not wanted by him, and Bay believes. We're only offering him a new contract to simply improve his asking price. Eric Bay has got like 15 months left on his current contract. Harry Maguire, he's done well in some of the games he's played in this season where he showed the ability to play out from the back. You know, he's been 
quite effective in the air, defensively being good. But he's also enjoyed bad games. But either way, Harry Maguire wasn't worth the £80 million we got him for. He's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment and the second most expensive signing at the club. So we definitely overpaid for him. And Juan Pesaka. He's a very good right back, and I think he's got a long term future at Man United. He's done well in some games this season on Wan Bissaka, where he's showed good attacking intent, he's got into good positions, he's put good crosses into the box. Defensively, he's been good. But there's been some games where he's been poor, where he's been caught out far too many times, and he's lacked that attacking intent. We need to see more attacking intent from Bissaka because that's what lets him down. We got him in a deal worth £50 million pounds from Crystal Palace in the summer of 2019. Now, Paul Pogba, he's really, really improved. I think it's very imperative that we keep Paul Pogba potentially past the summer because Paul Pogba brings creativity to the team. We've been getting the best out of him in recent months and he delivered the goods in Milan because he came on and scored and made an instant impact. We're too defensive without Paul Pogba. We need to keep Paul Pogba on that left wing, you know, in more of an advanced role because that's where he's more effective. Now, as you all know, reliable... Journalist Fabrizio Romano says that Juventus are refusing to give up on re-signing Paul Pogba and he said Ronaldo is key to Paul Pogba's exit. I said there's a good chance that Paul Pogba will go back to Juventus. Um, he enjoyed four very good years with them before he rejoined Man United. You know, he's also been linked to a move to Real Madrid and PSG so he's had a long-running transfer saga. And if we sell him in the summer chance for window, I reckon we'd get from between 60 to £70 million. Pounds. Uh, but Solskjaer hopes that Paul Pogba will sign a new contract. And he revealed that we have been in contract negotiations with Pogba, but as far as I'm aware at the moment, we've not yet made a formal contract offer. No, we haven't. But earlier on this season, we triggered that one-year extension on his contract, so he's under contract on Man United until June 2022. Matthias Popper, Paul Popper's brother, earlier on this season, gave us an update on Paul Popper's future, and he actually advised us to sell Popper in the summer chance window because he said there's a good chance he'll leave for free next year. And he said he's got no intentions of signing a new contract. Mino Riola, he's desperate to get his client out of the club. Uh, Mino Riola doesn't have a good relationship with Man United and he has been criticised a lot. Um, he did say, though, earlier on this season he's got no intentions of destabilising his client's season and he made an admission saying that he's working quietly on Paul Popper's transfer to avoid offence. And he made the announcement... In December last year regarding Popper and Solskjaer was furious with Mino Riola's announcement because it was just before the game against RB Leipzig in the Champions League. But as it stands at the moment, it's our most expensive signing. We paid £89 million for him and I think this is his fifth season at the football club since he rejoined. Uh, Paul Popper just come back from a thigh injury not so long ago, so he was out for a while and you can tell he was a big miss. Solskjaer said he was a big miss. Um, he had an ankle injury earlier on this season and he was out for the vast majority of last season with an ankle injury. But analysing the vast majority of Pogba's career since he rejoined, he hasn't been consistent enough. But in the last couple of months, he certainly has. I think Scott McTominway is a decent player, but McTominway is not at that level yet where we want him to be at. But I give McTomway certainly more time, you know, he's only young, he's got a lot of development in him. 
Uh, just after the first lockdown, Matomwe signed a five-year contract with the club. Uh, Fred, I think he's quite good. He wasn't worth the £52 million that we got him for from Shakhtar Donetsk. Uh, Fred had an absolute abysmal game against Leicester in the FA Cup quarter-final. Uh, gave the ball away countless times and he was accountable for Leicester's first goal. His worst game in a Manchester United shirt, I reckon. But Fred's not at that level as yet. I've just said the same thing regarding McTominay. But I would keep Fred potentially past the summer. Donny van der Beek. Um, he's a good player when he plays, but Donny van der Beek has played nowhere near as much as I expected. Most of his appearances have come from the bench when he's been involved. He's only started two games in the league this season. Now, like I updated you recently, Donny van der Beek suffered another setback in his career because he was an unused substitute in Netherlands' 4-2 defeat to Turkey in Istanbul. Mark Hughes reckons that Donny van der Beek feels lost and he's edging closer to a Man United exit. But he said recently that Donny van der Beek feels loved at the club despite his lack of game time. He said prior to that that van der Beek wants to quit Man United after one season due to his lack of game time and he said he wanted to hold showdown talks with Ed Woodward. Solskjaer made an admission earlier on this season saying that Donny van der Beek is unhappy at the club but he promised him more game time at Man United. He's versatile, he can play in three different roles and we got him from Ajax last summer in a deal worth £40 million. Pounds. ESPN said back in January that we rejected several loan offers for Donny van der Beek because we were reluctant to let him go. But Ronald De Boer actually backs him to be a success at Manchester United. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, he's exceptional. He's our best player. And he's the best signing we have made since the Sir Alex Ferguson era because he has made the difference in the team. In most of Bruno Fernandes' games, he has been very, very consistent. But there's also been a few games where he's been poor and he's looked off the pace. We have overplayed Bruno Fernandes, definitely. Uh, Fernandes has been at Manchester United now over a year. Don't forget, he did say on his 12-month anniversary that he's planning on spending many years at Manchester United. There was narratives coming out earlier on this season saying that Bruno Fernandes was refusing to sign a new contract until he has assurances over the club's transfer plans. Says we, we was willing to double his wages to £200,000 a week. Fernandes' current contract expires in 2025. There is an option to extend for a further 12 months. We initially paid £47 million for him, but the overall cost with add-ons is just over £67 million. Uh, Mason Greenwood, he's done very, very well since he broke into our first team squad. Uh, sometimes we play Mason Greenwood on the right wing, sometimes we play him centrally. Greenwood made his senior debut in 2019. He's been a United player since the age of seven, so he's been part of the club for a while. And earlier on this season, we give him a new four-year contract. A lot this season, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been defending him. At the start of this season, we give Mason Greenwood that number 11 shirt. Marcus Rashford, you know, he's a very good player, but he has enjoyed his bad periods. I just think we need to keep Marcus Rashford out wide on the left because that's where he's more effective. A couple of times we put him on the right wing and sometimes we play him centrally. Uh, Rashford's actually out with injury at the moment. He is a miss. He had an ankle injury not so long ago and he was out for a lot of last season with a back injury. So he's becoming a bit injury prone, is Marcus Rashford. 
And Edison Cavani, he's made a fantastic impact since he's come in. So these good players at Manchester United. Yeah, we are going to sell players, obviously, in the summer chance window. You know, a good chance Cavani's going to go. Good chance Mata's going to go. Good chance Matic is going to go. Jones should go. Romero should go. Uh, Pobba could still go. Uh, good chance Donny van der Beek will go because he's not getting enough chances. Uh, Fred possibly could go, but I don't want him to. Uh, could we loan Brandon Williams out? Uh, De Gea, you know, there's a good chance that we'll sell him. Anthony Martial, you know, a good chance we'll sell him. There's a lot of Man United fans that are saying we need to sell Anthony Martial. There is quite a few players that don't get in our 11, though, isn't there? Williams doesn't get in our 11. Jones doesn't get in our 11. Romero doesn't. Axel Tuanzebe doesn't. Uh, Juan Mata doesn't. So, there is a few, isn't there? So, anyway, guys, that's everything to update you today. What do you think to the Marcos Lorente news? Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribing as always. And I'll be doing another video tonight. Take care. God bless.